You know, I can't understand it, but something is driving your blood pressure up, Lucille. You've been taking your medication every day. Yes. Yes, of course. I don't want to frighten you, but you'll be a lot better off once we can lower that blood pressure. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Continue taking the medication I prescribed. Mm. <sighs> oh, no. What? Your feet dangle over the end of the bed. Oh, Justin, how are we going to find a bed long enough for you? The point is, darling, that we have a bed. Oh, I'm sure she's shaken by it. I remember how taken aback I was. Elizabeth, we all agreed in the very beginning that if Alan attempted to make a legal issue of this, we would drop it for Philip's sake. And Philip would move back in with you. Now, as difficult as that's going to be for Jackie and I, we're prepared to do just that. Yes, Justin, but... I don't understand... This is what... I don't understand why Mike can't go to Alan, say you, you've changed your mind and you want to retain custody of Philip, and everything could, could remain as it was before. You're talking about Alan as if he were being rational. He's not. Dr. Marler. Justin. Look, since I've gotten here, I've watched you trying to deal with something that's... It's got to be impossible to accept. Look, I know how strong you are, but, well, you've got to be filled with sadness and, and anger. I mean, don't you think it'd be a good idea if you could let some of that out? Or at least try to. It would make you feel better. Kitty, I am a doctor and a surgeon, and I have seen death many times. And I know those lines by heart. Because I've had to say them to the families of some of my patients. Right now, I keep waiting for Jackie to walk through that door. Because I cannot believe that I'll never be able to put my arms around her again. Look, could you just tell me what, right now what exactly Mindy's injuries are? Other than a bruise on her forehead, there are none. Are you sure? I'm positive. We did a whole series of x-rays. There are no injuries indicated. We're holding her here in the hospital and slight chance that she may be suffering from a concussion that seems to be very remote at this time. Well, well uh, what about this, uh, this pain in the right side she's been complaining about? I could find no physical reason to explain that. Now, do you have any more questions, Mr. Lewis? No, 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 thank you, doctor. You told me everything I need to know. Son, forgive me. Don't you... Don't you ever call me that? Because you're not my father. No father would ever do this to his son. Never. Well, obviously, she's just out to uh, ruin her husband. I think she's telling the truth about the rape, and I think you do, too. Now, you weren't there, Justin. You don't have any idea what happened. Oh, Ross, you weren't there either. No, but I've talked to Roger, and I believe him. And you know, he's got a lot of enemies in this town that's going to make it damn hard for him to get a fair trial. Well, the newspapers seem to be treating him pretty good. Too damn good, in fact. They seem to be more than willing to print every story you leak to them to smear his wife. Holly Thorpe deserves everything she gets. Why? Why, Ross? Because she reported the rape? Is she breaking some unwritten law? She's supposed to suffer in silence? And if she doesn't, well, then she's fair game, right? Justin, why are you for her? Because you like her or because you don't want to see me win a case, huh? Ross, you're very bright and you're a damn good lawyer. And I'd like to see you use those talents to put those talents to better use. Well, you don't know anything you're talking about. This is the most important case I could be handling right now. Yeah, so you've said. But I decided to love you as my own son. Oh. Gee, thanks. You decided. What about you? You decide not to love me? I didn't know you were my son until you were 10 years old. Oh, yeah? I would have told you then, Philip, but you were very ill. Tell me this. I recovered a long time ago. Some reason you haven't told me since?
Am I gonna stay like this? Hey, come on, shh. Daddy. Come on, baby, come on. You're the smartest man I know. One of the best in your field. Am I supposed to believe that you haven't formed an opinion? We're calling in a specialist. Oh, I want to know what you think. Very clear. But under no circumstances are you to tell Sam about that surgery. And you defied me! You had no right to do that! She's got a right to know everything about her case. That's the only way she's going to trust us. You don't know the first thing about trust. Oh. What did I tell you? What did I tell you would happen if you told Sam about the surgery? You said that we'll never be able to see each other ever again. Good. You're finally hearing me. That's how Philip thought of you, Ross. He wrote about you like your father. Letters to you. It was about you. I, I know how much you did for him. I know how much good in him came from you. And he might have been my flesh and blood, but he was your heart and soul. He had your heart and soul. So that's why I, I loved him so much. Uh, oh, thank you. Sammy, are you going to be all right getting to the airport and back? Yeah. Well, uh, little brother, you, you take care of Sam, okay? I will, sir. Okay. And while you're at it, you need to take care of yourself, too. Look who's talking. This time, stay healthy. Huh? You can't save the world if you're not healthy. Okay. I don't want to save the world. Just, just a little corner of India, that's all. Okay. When you get to your corner, give me a call. Okay. You had a good flight. Thanks for all that speed. See you later, Sam. Bye.